Hey there, man and woman of God. I just want to encourage you today um, as we look at the Psalms and the Proverbs, uh, they are considered to be wisdom literature. Really what I want to share today is from Psalm 22. Um, it actually is a part of a group of Psalms that are considered messianic Psalms. And I really think that they're interesting because they really show they don't just talk about the wisdom of God, they show it and highlight it in a dynamic way. And so, for example, when you look at these Messianic Psalms, verse, uh, they're basically Psalm 22, 23, and 24, they are sharing a different aspect of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so for Psalm 22, it shows how Jesus is the good shepherd and how he lays his life down for his sheep. And you see that in John chapter 10, verse 11. Also, if you were to look at Psalm 23, which we're very familiar with, we see how Jesus is a great shepherd and how he cares for his sheep. And if you were to look at Hebrews 13, verses 20 through 21, you'll see the images of that. And then if you were to read Psalm 24, it is a messianic psalm that talks about how Jesus is the chief shepherd and how he's coming for his sheep. And we can see the images of that in 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 4. Um, but today I, I really want to focus on the first psalm of the Messianic Psalms, Psalm 22, which shows how Jesus is the good shepherd and how he's the one who lays down his life for his sheep. If you were to take Psalm 22, you can divide it. And we, Well, first of all, when you read Psalm 22, 23, and 24, you really should have images of the life of Jesus Christ. Um, so when we look at Psalm 22, the first 21 verses, um, they talk about Christ's suffering and his crucifixion. They talk about his pain in the prayer um, you see images of that. And this, the first 21 verses of Psalm 20, 22, Christ is in the midst of his enemies. It's at the time of his crucifixion. And then if you were to go on from that to verse 22 through 31 of Psalm 22, you'll see it shift. And now Christ is in the midst of the church. And it depicts praise it depicts the promise of God. And also, we, we see the focus about how Christ, His glory, and His resurrection are in the midst of His church. And that's Psalm 22, verses 22 through 31. And so, how we connect this, I want to share a couple of verses from Psalm 22, verses 1 through 21. And I'm going to share a verse from that psalm, and then I want to share a corresponding verse from the New Testament. Now, you've got to realize that the Psalm 22 is attributed to David. David lived 1,000 years before Jesus Christ. And that's why I think it's dynamic, because not only is it telling you about the wisdom of God, it's showing you the wisdom of God. A psalm that is, that is attributed to Jesus, fulfilled in Jesus, 1,000 years before he was born a man on this earth. That's God's wisdom. And hopefully it'll also not only encourage you in the, the truth of God's word, but it'll also encourage you as you seek out wisdom, that we're seeking not a wisdom, but the definitive wisdom of our human existence. And that's the wisdom that comes from the very creator King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Um, so the first for Psalm 22, when we see this um, New Testament story fulfilled in the cross of Psalm 22, verses 1 through 21, the very first verse of Psalm 22, it says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? And you see a corresponding verse in Matthew 27, verse 46, where Jesus is on the cross. And he says this, Eli, Eli, 
Lama Shabakathani, which is, which is Aramaic, and it means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Same, same language there. If you were to go on to verse 2 of Psalm 22, this Messianic Psalm, it says, my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. And you see a corresponding imagery here in Matthew 27, verse 45, where it says, from noon until three in the afternoon, which is daytime, that darkness came over the land. And you see the alternate, the alternate of light and darkness at this Messiah's uh, uh, suffering. If you continue on, right, you continue on into Psalm 6 through 8, um, we see how this suffering servant um, has the reproach of the people. So in verse 6 it says, But I am as a worm and not a man, scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. He who trusts in the Lord, they say, let the Lord rescue him. Let him deliver him since he delights in him. And you can see a corresponding verse in Matthew 27, verses 39 through 44, when it talks about the moment when Jesus is being crucified, how these people hurled insults, how they shook their heads. Um, you know, they, they even say, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross. If you are the son of God, basically, if you have the favor of God, save yourself. And that's the exact same kind of terminology and words, the shaking of the head, the scorn, the reproach of the people that you see. If you were to continue on to Psalm 22 and you were to look at verses 11 through 22, you can see how this suffering servant is abandoned and he's surrounded by the enemy. Um, and so he says he, in Psalm 11 or 22 verses 11 through 12, it says, Do not be far from me, speaking of God, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. He's being surrounded by the enemy. And so you can see this in Matthew 26, verse 56, when Jesus is, uh, is, is being um, apprehended. And it says that the disciples deserted him. And now who is he left with? These people, the crowd, the mob, uh, the, the Roman um, soldiers who are flogging him and beating him and, 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 and putting him on a cross. The disciples fled. And at this time, he is surrounded like the Psalm 22, verses 11 through 12 say. If you were to continue on, I know there's a lot, but there's a lot of connections here of Psalm 22 to the life and death of Jesus Christ. Verse 16, it says, Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircle me. They pierced my hands and my feet. It's very clear. So, of course, you, you can find that with Jesus, uh, Matthew 27, verse 35. If you were to move on to Psalm 22, verse 17, it's, it's, it says, um, All my bones are on display. The people stare and gloat over me. So, at this moment, people are staring and gloating. And if you were to look at Luke 23, verse 35, it, it describes the people... And it says this, the people stood watching, the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. And then finally, you know, it's easy to say, well, you know, maybe you're reading too much into this, Pastor Jacob, of, of seeing in Psalm 22, something written a thousand years before Jesus, that you're reading too much into it to say that this is all about Jesus. Well, maybe, but maybe not because I think that there's actually even concrete evidence in Scripture that Psalm 22 is meant to depict Jesus, the suffering servant. So if you were to look at Psalm 22, verse 18, it says this, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. And, and if you were to look at John chapter 19, verses 23 through 24, it talks about Jesus, how they took his clothes, how they divided them up. 
and even what the soldier said, let us decide who gets the garments by casting lots. And then at the very end in verse 24 of John 19, it says this, this happened that the scriptures might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. And so and it says, so this is what the soldiers did. And so literally John is quoting Psalm 22 verse 18. So Psalm 22 is a messianic psalm. If you were to look at Psalm 23 and 24, all three of these psalms read Jesus into this. And also it displays the wisdom of God, not only from the time of David to the time of Jesus, but also you got to remember that this is wisdom literature. And so it's wisdom for us today. So I encourage you as you continue to read the psalms, know that the one who is giving wisdom knows the future knows your future, and he's coming back. God bless you, church. We love you.